Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with My Hero Academia. Last time on My Hero Academia, we had Bright Future, where we finished off uh, the fight with Overhaul, as Aerie actually rewound him so that uh, he, he separated from uh, the big guy. However, her rewinding was going out of control and was starting to take a toll on Midoriya. Luckily, Eraserhead was able to get up there and deactivate her quirk. So, yeah, there was at least that. Uh, then... Everyone was sort of taken to a hospital, uh, but before Overhaul could get to the specific villain hospital, uh, Shigaraki and the League showed up in order to uh, take the, uh, the well, the two cures, technically. The cure and then the cure for the cure. Um, and then we also got Shigaraki... Well, first off, uh, Mr. Compress took uh, Overhaul's left arm as just a bit of... Uh, vengeance basically i also i didn't realize this in the reaction but uh mr compress actually has a robot arm now which is pretty cool and then shigaraki decayed uh overhaul's other arm which has basically eliminated his quirk he can't uh he can't use his quirk without his hands so yeah and we had the complete and total failure of kai chisaki Meanwhile, back at the hospital, pretty much everyone was getting along uh, with their injuries, and pretty much everyone was recovering. However, uh, there was one who was unable to recover, and that was Sir Night Eye, who ended up passing away, unfortunately. Great character, loved him, sad to see him go, but uh, it was a very nice uh, moment between him, All Might, Midoriya, and Mirio. And so now we'll have to see where we are going to go next. Hopefully to a relaxing episode. Um, normally we do have our sort of breather episode between arcs. And hopefully it's this episode and not last episode. Because last episode, while technically being a bit of a breather episode, was also ungodly sad. So hopefully we just sort of take it easy in this one but we'll have to see so with that being said let's get right into this episode of my hero academia here we go oh also the reaction is in the description and in the pinned comment go check that out now let's get going allow me to introduce you to one of his most faithful servants gigantomachia Gigantomachia. Okay. Gi Gan To Machia. Jesus. <laughs> Gigantomachia. That is a guy who looks like we're going to need 100% for. Now, is this setting up the remainder of the season or season five? That's my question. I have no idea. Okay. So, that's episode 15. Holy Toledo. Gigantomachia. Honestly, you really should have just called him Buffered. Buffered C. Titan, specifically. But that's just me. Anyway. Oh, okay, yeah, this was our... This was definitely our sort of... Kind of relaxing mid-middle uh, episode. Kind of. It was still, you know, a bit of mourning. But, you know, it was... Like, okay, and when I say, like, oh, the, the middle episode, I mean, like, you know... Um, uh, the episode where they picked names, you know, picked hero identities in season two, or when they did the dorm rooms in season three. We don't get anything quite like that in season four, but it's still, oh, still a bit of a restful episode in this, uh, before we move on to something else. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So many things, so many things. Okay. The first thing I wrote down is Gran Torino and Kurogiri. So, first off, he just completely took down Kurogiri. It's incredible. Uh, honestly, it is kind of incredible how amazing Gran Torino is. Can we say that, please? 
Can we put some respect on the name? Because that old man can kick ass. And this is a guy who didn't really want to be a pro hero. Yet he is still this amazing in his old age, you know? And not only was he that good to take down Kurogiri in one hit, basically. But also, he was fast enough to grab uh, Kurogiri and Sukauchi and bolt out of there, away from uh, Gigantomachia. That name is ridiculous. <laughs> that is such a ridiculous name, Gigantomachia, but oh well. So, yeah, again, just props, props to Gran Torino. Again, it kind of makes you sit here and think, like, the hell was this guy like in his prime, you know? Like, yeah, no wonder All Might was afraid of him. He was in his prime when he trained, bouncing all over the fucking place, beating the shit out of him. You know? Holy crap. Anyway, so yeah. And then, yeah, we get Gigantomachia, the other villain cultivated by All for One, which is interesting. Um, so, presumably... It, now, he said, like, look... You, if I ever go away, you're in charge of protecting Tomura. But if you ever need assistance, there is someone out there. So that's pretty interesting. I would be very interested to see uh, how this guy is going to uh, how this guy is going to work with Shigaraki. You know, like that's pretty crazy. I mean, just the whole thing, like. This dude is huge. Like now, with the name of Gigantomachia, I I don't know. Like, I'm curious. Basically, what is his quirk exactly? Because obviously, his quirk has made him into you know this gigantic, basically like a titan. He's like the armored titan, basically. He's a little boy, actually. But um, but I'm curious if he actually transforms or not. You know. We don't know. We don't fully know what his quirk is as of yet. But that would be very interesting. Because you'd also think, like, okay, this guy is just, you know... Why isn't this guy just, like, wrecking shop? Like, why does he just sort of live in the mountains, you know? So, I don't know. I'd be... I'm very curious how this guy is going to work with Shigaraki, you know? Well, and just the fact that, you know... Presumably, you know, Shigaraki would be like, Oh, well, now I am your master, you know? Because he's the one in charge now. I'd be interested to see how well that sits with Gigantomachia, you know? I don't know, like, we, from what we've barely seen of this guy, I'm very curious as to where we're going with him. Like, how, I don't know, how is he going to play off of Tomura Shigaraki, you know? I don't know, but I'd be very interested in that. Anyway, um... Cut back to the hospital. A uh, couple things. There was something first I wanted to do. Yeah. Well, uh, th on the news, pretty much... So that was interesting that on the news... Well, they did say... This is what they've been reporting since yesterday was uh, the fact that Shigaraki uh, ambushed the, the, the ambulance with overhaul, uh, which is interesting. Um, however, I did want to see... Uh, I wanted to see um, the news covering Deku's battle with Overhaul. You know, like, there had to have been some... You know, with them out there in the friggin' sky fighting, there had to have been someone filming that, right? But when they got back to the dorm, they did say, you know, th they were all concerned because they saw everything on the news, you know? So, um... So, presumably it was covered, but I wanted to see that, you know, especially because, you know, we had that scene where they showed the, the news coverage of, you know, the debut of Red Riot and Uravity and Froppy. I want to see the news coverage of the debut of Deku and how he defeated Overhaul, you know? Uh, so that would have been so cool. I want to see that. I hope they show that at some point. But I don't know. We may have, we may have honestly passed our chance of seeing that. Um, and then we did go see Mirio, and he's still smiling. Which honestly, yeah, you know, if you want to take, it's so interesting this philosophy of smiling that, you know, it definitely surrounds not only 
the users of One for All, but also, you know, those just adjacent to them, like Sir Nighteye and Mirio. You know, this whole thing about keep a smile and laugh, and that all, as far as we know, all of that stemming from Shimura, you know, because that's, that's, that was her thing originally. You know, when, when there are people in crisis, you need to smile to show them that everything will be okay. That was her thing. That was her philosophy passed on to All Might, passed on to Night Eye, and then passed on to Mirio and Midoriya, you know? So that's the thing. It's just so interesting to see how that philosophy has been around for... for we don't even know how long. We don't know how long ago uh, Shimura was, you know? We, we don't have a definitive answer on how long All Might was a pro hero. And then, how long was Shimura a pro hero before him, you know? So... But that's just so interesting. And it does sort of make you wonder, like, okay, well, was it... You, you kind of stop and think, like, you know, with how far it goes... With how far that philosophy goes back, you almost wonder, like, does it go back further? Like, does she... Did Shimura get that from her master, you know? Or, like, who knows? Maybe it was started by the original user of One for All. But as far as we know, it starts at her, you know? So... So yeah, so I do like that, just the, the philosophy of smiling, and he's like, yeah, I know, I lost my quirk and my mentor, but I need to keep smiling, you know? And I, oh, and I love that talk of, you know, of Midoriya starting to think, like, should I, should I give him one for all, you know? Maybe I'm not, I'm not good enough, you know? I needed Mr. Aizawa and Aerie, and it's like, it's okay. Well, first off, you don't have to do everything alone. You don't have to be by yourself. It's okay to get help from others, man. Like, I think that may honestly be something Deku needs to learn, that it's okay to have help from others. And I, I like Mirio saying, it's like, look, stop thinking that you did something wrong. You saved Aerie. You defeated Overhaul. You know, even if, yes, you needed help from Eri and Mr. Aizawa, it doesn't matter. You still did it. You are a hero, you know? And I like how he says, like, look, even if that was possible, you giving me your quirk, which it, it seems it seems like one of those things, like, you know, uh, I would imagine this is going to be sort of like Bakugo, like, you know, while he didn't, he didn't really understand it, you know, Mirio's probably thinking, like, okay, I don't know what he's talking about, but I'm not going to read too far into it. Let me just reassure him, you know? And, um... And so with that, like, you know, him saying, like, look, even if you could give me your quirk, that would just cause problems for you. And I, I would just be a problem for you, and you would be bummed out and gloomy. So you, you know, keep getting better. Be a hero Deku which is actually the thing you know when uh when uh, especially like at the beginning or um you know they show they showed the uh the fight with uh Overhaul again uh, a bit of it where they you know it's like okay uh you know they have like oh I I need to be a hero who can save people that's who I'm going to be the, that's the interesting thing about that line which I've said it since that fight two episodes ago, is that, you know, it's like, that's who I'm going to be. It's like, that's who you are. Which I think is a mentality Deku needs to actually get into now. That is who you are. You are a hero. You know? You are a hero. So, hopefully he can start to get into that mindset. And I like that he says, like, look, you need to keep smiling, Deku. Which is also something, even though... You know, we've had Deku say, it's like, I want to save people with a smile on my face. Like, there have been a number of times where, uh, especially like, you know, th this is why he actually got points off during the, uh, during the provisional license exam, during the rescue mission, is that he kind of forgets, you need to smile, man. You have to keep that smile, you know? So that was good of Mirio to remind him. I really like that. Um, we also got that, uh, Mirio may be taking a break from UA for a little while, um, because he doesn't have his quirk right now. However, he is, he's not giving up hope or anything. Obviously, he's still smiling, and he says, once Aerie starts to learn her power a bit more, 
I'm going to ask her to rewind me to a point where I had permeation. So that's at least good. So there is the possibility. Now, whether that's going to be soon, you know, maybe by the end of the season or not, we'll have to see. It could be a while, but at least we have that hope that he will be able to get, uh, he will be able to get his quirk back, which that's the thing is that, you know, we thought like, okay, maybe Aerie can rewind Mirio and Night Eye, but the problem was Night Eye needed to be immediately, and that just wasn't happening. Mirio can wait, you know? So that's at least good. There is that hope that Mirio will get his uh will get his quirk back. So that's good. And then we had the return to the dorm, uh, which I did like that uh everyone else in class one A being concerned and stuff, so that was really, really good. Um, and then, yeah, like, you know, Sato baking a double chocolate cake, Momo getting some tea, everyone being all huggy and stuff. I like that Ida, you know, was concerned about their emotions because, yeah, he was there when, you know, Midoriya started crying, you know, at lunch. So he understood. It's like, look, maybe we need to give them some space. But then when it was like, no, it's okay. Then he was like, okay, now I'm going to freak out too. You know, so I really did like that. <coughs> Um, so yeah, and man, I just want, I want to talk to them all, you know, I, I want just to sit down and talk with all of them. Cause they even says like, you know, uh, they had Shoji saying, it's like, oh, well, at, at least we know they're okay. And Jiro being like, yeah, but are we sure they're really okay? You know? And it's like, oh, I just want to sit down and just have a talk, you know? <sighs> oh, well. Interesting thing for Ochako uh, that she was talking to Mr. Aizawa and said, it, it definitely seems like, you know, she feels, maybe not guilt, but maybe, you know, this, she def, just doesn't feel good about what happened with Night Eye because she was the one looking after him, you know? And she says, like, oh, if I had been stronger, if I had been faster, maybe, I, maybe we could have ended up saving him. But you just... Like Deku, you really just can't dwell on that, you know? It just... You cannot beat yourself up for that. And I like that Mr. Aizawa says that. And interesting thing, he says, you need to think about, is this actually what you want in your life, you know? Is this what you want your life to be? Because that's the thing with Ochako, is that her motivation has always been to get enough money to support her parents. Which is a decent and is a fairly you know, noble, technically, uh, goal for being a hero. But the thing about it is, is that getting money, even if it's for your parents, to have that come with something like, you know, the death of Night Eye or, you know, this horrifying battle... Is that actually, like, can you handle that? But I like that Uraraka says, I want to save people, which is interesting. So I don't think this will be anything like Ochako gives up on being a hero, but I would be interested to see how this, like, what sort of character arc we could go on with this now. She wants to save people, not just, um, I, I don't know, it's almost like a re- like maybe a reaffirming of being a hero it's like she wants to save people which is a bit more than just i want to be a hero and even if she has the goal of i want to be a hero to help my family now it's i want to save people so i'll be interested to see if we get some sort of a character arc for that meanwhile we have the remedial group uh the remedial group who's going uh they're going in for more of their training which is interesting um i did uh, I, I like that we're actually going to see some of it, which is pretty cool. Uh, but first off, Aizawa is not there because uh, because he's having to basically work with Eri. Because yeah, I mean, he may be he may actually start racking up some absences in class and everything because he's the only one that can uh, he's the only one that can deactivate Eri's quirk if it starts going out of control. You know, so. So that's the thing. Um, so All Might and Present Mike are there, but now uh, Endeavor is also there, which is interesting. That it's like, oh, I have some free time, so I'm going to come watch your training. Like, okay, I'd be very interested to see why exactly. Like, why is he doing that specifically? Like, even if he had some free time, which 
is interesting. I thought he was a very busy man, but I, I don't know. I'm very curious to see why Endeavor is there. But also, at the very least, he's there now. He is going to be uh, having a one-on-one -on -one talk with All Might, which I'm sure that'll go over really well. And, of course, Yawarashi is there, too, uh, with some of the others from Shiketsu. And so, if Endeavor... <laughs> if if Yawarashi meets Endeavor, we don't know how well that could go over. But, uh, but Yawarashi does seem to be a bit better about... Uh, talking with Todoroki and stuff even if he you know doesn't still doesn't really like him he, he's at least not being you know hostile towards him like he, he can at least now be friendly even if he isn't friends with Todoroki uh we also get Kami presumably the real Kami not Toga the real Kami which is pretty cool who is weirdly a bit more forward than Toga was as Kami now granted Toga got right up on Deku, rubbing her boobs right on his back. So somehow, the real Kami is being more forward is actually a little weird, but oh well. But that was pretty cool. I'd be curious to see what her quirk is, because we didn't see. You know, Toga doesn't uh, copy the quirks, just the body. So I would be very interested to see uh, what she can do. Also, has anyone acknowledged the fact that that was a different Kami. That's a good point. They might not know. You know? They might... Although... Well... No, I mean, because Midoriya knows Toga's quirk now. And... But he only learned that just recently. Like, like to them, like, two days ago. So it's possible that he hasn't said anything yet. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they don't know that that wasn't the real Kami. So, here's the next question, though. Did... Why exactly did Toga fail? Did Toga actually, like, take the rescue mission? Like, because the point for her was to get Midoriya's blood. But... The point was to get Midoriya's blood. But we didn't see her in the rescue exercise. So maybe she left before that? Okay, but Kami has to know she wasn't there, you know? Kami would have to be like, wait, I wasn't there, I didn't take the test, so clearly that was a double. So I guess there is that, at least. I don't know, I hope we talk about that a little bit, but yeah. And we also get the, the one guy from Shiketsu, he's gonna be there to observe. So yeah, presumably, next episode, we're gonna get some Todoroki and Bakugo like moments which is interesting like the two of them like leading an episode which is interesting um and we'll just see how their training goes with gang orca fucking gang orca is back again damn it and then uh, uh i hope we get to see the talk between all might and endeavor like that's got to be fun so yeah but that's basically it great episode really enjoyed it and i am ready for whatever this arc is going to be in the back half of season four so yeah that is basically it with all that being said i'm alex from seventh hour films and i will see you guys next time take care all right guys thanks for watching this video if you want to watch more of my my hero academia reactions you can click on the playlist you can subscribe if you haven't done that already and be sure you hit that notification bell you can support me on patreon and follow me on social media links below in the description see you guys later